Can I start? Everyone prepared? Good morning. Just one second. Good morning again. In a few minutes, the Security Council will hold yet another counterproductive debate on the Middle East. Instead of focusing on the most urgent issues facing the region, Iran's race towards becoming a nuclear power, the crisis in Lebanon, the wars in Syria and Yemen, or the people of Gaza being held hostage by Hamas, the Council will once again focus its attention on criticizing Israel, encouraging the Palestinians to continue with their rejectionism and culture of hate. The Palestinian Authority uses the UN only to delegitimize Israel, not promote a sustainable solution to the conflict. The Palestinian security forces savagely beat and murder protesters and journalists in an attempt to silence opposition to their corruption. The PA also refused a deal to get a million COVID-19 vaccines that could save many Palestinian lives just because it was offered by Israel. Still, the Council ignores these actions and uses its debate to attack Israel, emboldening the PA to continue with its despicable conduct. For this debate, the Council has invited a member of a political Israeli NGO affiliated with the far left to brief them on Jerusalem. This decision could easily be understood as a dangerous acceptance of Hamas's false narrative about events in Jerusalem. And may I remind you that Hamas is a designated terrorist organization here in the United States and in the European Union as well. The terror organization used these lies as an excuse for its missile attacks on our capital and on millions of our citizens. Let me be clear. No lies repeated in the Security Council will ever change this simple truth. Jerusalem has been the heart of our eternal homeland for thousands of years and will forever be the capital of the Jewish state. The Council's continued refusal to take meaningful action against Iran and other grave human rights violators, an obsession with the words only Jewish state, also encourage companies like Ben and & Jerry's and Unilever to impose anti-Semitic boycotts on Israel. However, as the Abram Accords prove, real peace in our region is reached only when the parties come together because they want to build a better future for their children, not through boycotts or by the Security Council interfering. Israel and its new allies in the region are building a new future of coexistence, tolerance, and cooperation. Two weeks ago, the United Arab Emirates officially opened its embassy in Tel Aviv. This week, we saw the first direct flights between Israel and Morocco. These join the many agreements we signed with these countries, as well as with Bahrain and Sudan. If the Council truly wants to help promote peace in our region, it should encourage the Palestinian leadership to stop its payments to terrorists, incitement to violence, and attempts to demonize Israel, and instead to agree to a dialogue with Israel with no preconditions. Thank you very much. Ambassador, uh, nice to see you. It's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Hi, Pamela. Good hi, morning. Hi, Ambassador. Uh, as the ambassador to the UN and the US, uh, the Biden administration has put out feelers and said that it would like to see a resumption of talks between Israel and the Palestinian territories sponsored by the United States. What are you hearing? Not a comprehensive solution. Uh, what are you hearing about this? And can you uh, fill us in a little bit? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, well, there, there are, of course, uh, attempts by the uh, American uh, administration uh, to uh, bring the two sides uh, together. But uh, I think uh, all, of, uh, all the details should be discussed between President Biden and Prime Minister Bennett. 
uh, whenever he will visit Washington, and I uh, expect this visit will uh, take place quite soon. No, not specifically. We are uh, the teams are coordinating uh, the visit, but I expect it would happen soon. Thank you. Yes, please. Where are you from? Hi, Ambassador. I'm Kristen Salumi from Al Jazeera English. I'm wondering if you think the Palestinians would be more likely to come to negotiations if there were no more evictions or destructions of Palestinians in J Jerusalem. Well, I think when uh, two sides are uh, negotiating uh, peace agreements, uh, so naturally they have some uh, disagreements. For example, we think that the uh, fact that the Palestinians are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to pay uh, for uh, terrorists is also th something that uh, is quite problematic. But if each side would expect to have uh, get 100% of its demands before starting the negotiation, so there will never be negotiation between the two sides. Our foreign formal policy is uh, that we are in favor of the dialogue and each side can bring in to the table every issue and every disagreement. But the only way to promote peace is by direct dialogue, direct negotiation without any preconditions. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Good morning.